beautiful Austria. Lovely house by the lake. Got here last night. And I flight from London. This place is fantastic, it's so calm and peaceful. We're here in uh, Wiener Neustadt, a town very close to Vienna and uh, every year we come here to watch the production of Theatre im Neukloister the local theatre group. Sarah does the choreography for their shows and this year we have the privilege to watch the premiere of their musical Maximilian. And this is basically a big deal. Maximilian is very important for the history of this place but we'll have someone with local knowledge to explain you all about it. The story of Maximilian. There were three families, the Burgundies, the French and the Austrians. The Burgundy daughter has two suitors, okay. the sons of the French and the Austrian. So the Austrian dad wants his son Maximilian to marry Maria, the Burgundy lady. And then, unfortunately, her dad dies and she becomes the ruler. But the people of her country keep demanding more and more and more and more. They always want more from her and she can't cope. It's all getting too much and she needs some help. Maximilian has grown up and he wants to be a true knight. Eine wahre Ritter. You'll hear them singing that a lot. My so he goes to try and help her. They fall in love and they get married. And what they really need is a, a child to bring all the lands together. And then they have a baby. But the baddie French keep spreading rumors because they want to win all the territory. And one of the things they say is that baby isn't a boy, so he can't inherit the work, all this land. He's a girl. And then eventually, Maria's stepmom says, he is a boy, look, here's his winky. Really? <laughs> really truly. Yeah. How do you say that in German? <laughs> No, they don't see, well, she doesn't say it like that. The old French dad says, right, well, I'm going to go to war and I'm going to fight them for the land. And so now Maximilian has a chance to be a real knight. And in the end? Maximilian, at the end, uh, he wins the war. All the French are defeated. They've got all the land. They've got their lovely family. And he's been a true knight at the end. Oh, finally, he managed to crown his dream. And very quickly, what is his relationship with Wiener Neustadt? Uh, he was born here yeah. and he is buried here. We are heading to, to see the grave of Maximilian. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do here, right? Yeah. The grave, which is just uh, there at the military academy, which you can see over there. But there's a rumor that there's another grave somewhere. There is. It's, not, it's not a rumor. It's over true. to you. It's true. Martin has just told us that he has a second grave in Innsbruck in the church that's called the Schwarzmännerkirche. Schwarzmannerkirche. Yeah, the black man's church. So where, where, where is the body then? Here, here. So the other one would be a cenotaph. Yeah. 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 which is an empty grave. And yeah. 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 So we've come to the place where uh, Maximilian is buried. Yeah. But contrary to what you may believe, he's not buried on the underground. No. He's no. buried between heaven and earth on the first in the floor. first floor in the first floor yeah. that's a kind of interesting yes because the church is, is upstairs okay. unfortunately it's not open until two o'clock so what does it what does it really but what does it really mean it means it's not too good for for heaven but uh, no no it means he's he's beyond <laughs> the earth <laughs> sarah to the rescue it's his mum is buried here, look. Just over there. Yes. Yeah. In the cloister. Mm. 
Mõni. Võtas siis seid, et sain. The choir of this church under the leadership of the Count of Count Franz von Waldseg sang Mozart's Requiem for the first time in 1793. Here with uh, Miki and Martin, who are kindly hosting us for the weekend. Michi, you were talking about this A E I O U. Yes. From uh, from. Uh, Friedrich the Third. Uh, so Frederick the Third, who's Maximilian's dad. Uh, what does A E I O U stands for? It means, alles Erdreich ist Österreich untertan. Which translates in. All the riches of the earth look up to Austria. We have another motto here, and uh, <laughs> the motto of Maria Teresa. Of Maria Teresa, yes, which says, "Kriege mögen andere führen, du glückliches Österreich heirate." Very good. Which then this translates into? Uh, war may lead others, but you happy Austrians should be led by marriage. It's basically make love and not war. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, so Leo. Yeah. After a morning of culture, we are now going for a rest. <laughs> Bumping again. We are now heading towards the restaurant. This is a Heuriger. Do you know what a Heuriger is? It's the grape. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> re re review the clip from the previous uh, explanation vlog. Can you explain me where the word Heuriger comes from? The, the, the wine of the last year is yeah. Heuriger. Oh, so this is a yeah, place that no, is no. Uh, that is in conjunction with the yes. uh, harvest of, yeah. Yeah, of yeah, grapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Normally the Heuriger is only available for a part of the year, especially during summer. It's like an... Um, it's like a trattoria in Italian. The Heuriger of, of this year is Wittmann. Leo, do you think it's enough? It's my, it's in, it's in, welcome back guys to another episode of Man vs Food Today <laughs> Huge plate of meat, isn't it Leo? Oh. Bye guys Oof. We can barely walk This is four in here uh, I had the maxi portion Wittmann This amazing Heuriger it's been really good to us. We are here at the theatre and as always the moment before the show is always the most exciting. <laughs> zoom in eventually and say okay this is this is going to be a scene and then you say okay and in this scene there will be dialogue and there will be song and then you start to zoom out again and you see how everything fits together and then you have of course to make a lot of adjustments it's a long process <laughs> adapt something like a book of course there's a dramatic structure already mm. if you do something like a bi biography you have to take a look at it and say okay how am I going to squeeze these important events into a classical two-act musical 
Mm. How, how do you find the right spot to take the break? How, where, where do you end? Usually a biography musical ends with the death of a character. There, there comes this time when you have to say, okay, this is the biography and now I throw it aside and just go with what I think works and you have to start thinking about it as a, as a show. <laughs> So what's next? <laughs> I think next up for me is a bit of a break. And then, well, I, I have a file on my computer which has like, I think, eight or, eight or nine musical ideas lying around. I don't know yet. It's, it's really tough from right, right after you've done a show like this. I think you need to really get a new perspective and get excited for something. So there you have it, a new musical, some history, a lot of food and good times with our friends. Now we're going back to the airport and then back home for this less than 48 hours trip to Austria. See you in the next one. Peace out. Take care. See you. <laughs> it's Jewish. <laughs>